Be sure to check out our new Sunday show, Fantasy Football Pregame at 11 a.m. live on Peacock. It's a one-stop shop for your NFL fantasy and betting needs. Get your start, sit, questions answered using the hashtag FFPregame. All right, fellas. Weekend Warriors time. Let's talk about the guys that actually had a big Sunday, and who better to start with than Devontae Smith, who made it pretty clear. Let's hear what Devontae had to say after the game. As a receiver, that's what it comes down to. 50-50 balls, you got to win it. I mean, the trust that Jalen has in all the receivers, just, I mean, it's our ball, no, nobody's ball. So um, just being there with him, um, just being able to make sure that if we don't come down with it, nobody comes down with it. Devontae, what's your mindset, man, when you see the ball coming your way and you know it's going to be like a 50-50 type, type it's my ball? ball or nobody's. It's my ball or nobody's, Devontae Smith said, and that lives up. as He's out-targeted A.J. Brown over the last two games after the goose egg week one. 31 fantasy points in week three. Lawrence, some big time bounce back these last two weeks after the disappointing week one for Devontae. Uh, again, another receiver where I like his answer. He just chilling. He ain't yelling or nothing. He's like, it's my ball, nobody ball. Remember, this is the Heisman Trophy winner at wide receiver. And I'm loving the fact that he's emerged now with Jalen Hurts because that's only going to make this offense overall even better when you got two guys that you had to worry about I think he's a strong flex play with how Jalen Hurts is doing in the pass against back-to-back 300 yard passing days so let's keep riding with it this is a pass first Eagles team once you account for game situation they're actually passing more than you would expect at a decent rate. They're kind of where the Chargers and the and the Packers were last year. So we thought this might be like a balanced team. We were worried it might be a run heavy team entering the year. This is like best case scenario for the Eagles. They're actually a pass first team. They can support two receivers. And we have had De- uh, Devontae Smith out target AJ Brown over the last two games, but I wouldn't be freaking out here. If you have AJ Brown, he's going to get his too. It's just that this is a really exciting offense that can support multiple weapons. Yeah, everybody's getting theirs in that trio. We know what Jalen's done, obviously, right in the thick of the MVP race right now. Now, Devontae and AJ Brown uh, consistently on pace for huge years. We touched on this in segment one, Ramondre Stevenson, somebody that there were big expectations for this year, especially in the pass game role when you hear Belichick talk about him. Finished his RB7 in week three with over 20 fantasy points. He led the Patriots running back in carries, rush yards, receptions, and receiving yards. Lawrence, you touched on it. Brian Hoyer has to play. This might lean back to the backfield a little bit more. Right, and, and this is why you got to feel even better about Ramondre Stevenson now, and you still don't count out Damian Harris because these are your two best players on offense now. Now, what happened against the Ravens for Stevenson? Like, we love that. In that type of game, it was only going to be Ramondre Stevenson. They gave him the shot. He showed up. Again, another strong flex play there for you. Pat, he outsnapped Damian Harris 41 to 25. So this is clearly he, his role is starting to sway all the way towards him a little bit. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, he can be that guy who's the passing down back, but then he's a big back, so he can actually score at the goal line. Damian Harris, obviously, very good at the goal line himself and a better breakaway runner. So both these guys have some clear strengths. But Stevenson, I think, would be very capable as the lead back here and a big time fantasy asset in that role. Sticking with the New England offense and brace yourself. Yes, Devontae Parker with the Lawrence said it, his best career game essentially finished as wide receiver 10, 20.6 fantasy points in week three. Guys, he wasn't really a factor week one and two, and then he comes out of nowhere and has this kind of game with Mac Jones. First off, congratulations to Devontae Parker for having a career day as far as uh, yards is concerned. Uh, how do I feel about this going forward? Eh. You know, especially Bulls with, gold. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Mac Jones out now. Again, they they're gonna really have to lean on these bats now. Devontae Parker is a beast when it kind of contested yep. catches. No, almost nobody better. But how is this offense going to look now when they was just starting to try to get it going? Also, I would worry more about what's up with that Baltimore secondary because it's two weeks in a row they getting lit up. Yep. You know, to, to give Devontae Parker his career day. <laughs> See, we, we, like, you know, they, they caught the interceptions, but we got to figure out what's going on on that side, too. I love that point. Yeah, the Ravens secondary has been one to target, I think. It's going to be one to target this year. It certainly was at the end of last year, and we're seeing that repeat. And it is nice here to see with Jacoby Myers out that Parker can step up. But I do wonder, you know, once Myers gets back, we got quarterback issues here. I, I do think it's probably full school. All right, this one will probably be a trivia question at some point in the very distant future. Matt Collins finished as wide receiver two 
in week three. I don't think anybody projected that. He had 30 fantasy points. He out-targeted Devontae Adams 9-8. to eight. Mm. <laughs> the We talked about the Raiders offense. It's a little difficult to figure out now. Good for Mac Collins, but man, this makes things that much more confusing. Hey, you, you know the song, Return of the Mac. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I don't think he's going to be returning once Hunter Renfro returns because he is a target monster in himself, and he he sat out with the concussion. Again, we didn't have much. uh, We didn't get much from Darren Waller. We hope to. You kind of just see this as a game. Like, hey, he had his day. Uh, Devontae Adams, he'll get more targets. Even though the past two games, Devontae Adams has been kind of low. He saved us with the touchdown, but it was definitely Mac Hollins' day. So to him too, congratulations, Mac Hollins. We knew this was going to be kind of like a low volume type of environment with the Titans. You know, wanted to be run heavy and every, everything. And, you know, sometimes targets condense to unexpected guys. I wouldn't be worried here about Devontae Adams. All right, James Robinson having a monster day. It's been really an impressive year for James Robinson when you consider what he's coming back from and the timeline that he's doing with that torn Achilles. Finished his RB6 over 20 points. Guys, here's what jumped out to me out of the gate. James Robinson ran more routes than Travis Etienne Ooh. yesterday, 20 to 14. <laughs> what do we do with that? Ooh, what, what, he, what you do with that is you say, look, James Robinson, I got you in double-digit rounds, and you're an RB2, and I love you. You <laughs> beat the whole – You win leagues. Yeah, we. You, he beat the whole – they can't come back from the Achilles tear myth, and I love it. I'm loving what he's doing, and I just keep it going, man, because he's he looking explosive. He outran the Chargers defense for 50 yards. The 37-yard run he had in week two, they said, oh, that was just one run. Well, he did it again. <laughs> Yeah, short yardage carry that he takes the house. So that's pretty nice. Fourth and one. Yeah, fourth and one. That's that's the best way to convert a fourth and one score. Man, out snapped and out carried ETN in week three. And fellas, I mean, and we're gonna keep this going right now. Jacksonville offense. We could say it together. Jacksonville offense is something to be excited about right now in that uh, blowout win against the Chargers, and that starts with Trevor Lawrence, who finished as a top five quarterback in fantasy this week. He targeted eight different pass catchers in week three his first 25 plus point fantasy uh, performance in his career trevor lawrence could be one of those bargain quarterbacks in a year where it doesn't look like there's a lot of them yeah i mean this this weekend you had to feel better coming in with guys like him and jared goff and cousins over at tom brady and but you love to see this side of the young quarterbacks spreading the ball around he not fixated on Christian Kurt, and he's running this offense how it's supposed to be run. They're looking good. Hell, they the best team in the division right now. They are win- they they dog walked the Chargers yesterday, and so like I'm I'm like you better put your ticket in now. It's probably too late. Too late. To get, it's too late yeah. to get the best money. <laughs> but if you just want to, you know, if you want to be a bandwagon better, go and get in on that. <laughs> yeah, Trevor Lawrence fifth in the league in EPA per play. He's second in completion percentage over expected, which measures accuracy. He is playing extremely well, and I do think we can buy into this char- or into this uh, Jacksonville offense. I think what's sustainable in my eyes is that an adult is in the room and Doug Peterson mm-hmm. there, now, right? <laughs> yeah. Where where yeah. where it, it matters a lot. We've seen Doug obviously yeah. have successful runs, yeah. specifically offensively, even with limitations at quarterback with young quarterbacks and uh the fact and, and Lawrence you kind of hinted at this say Jones involved Christian Kirk involved yeah, James that, Robinson involved love. there's a lot of different players impacting their point total right now and you don't got to worry about their coach being in the club you no, know what I'm saying no. <laughs> it's the club that he owns <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> not good <laughs> All right, uh, keeping it moving here. Chase Edmonds with a bounce back week, RB 11, 15.7 fantasy points in week three. I mean, the big one here for me is he saw all five goal line snaps in week three. So Chase Edmonds getting the goal line work in a game for Miami where they didn't throw the ball a lot. Yeah, so what what this game left me feeling like, just it left me feeling kind of confused, you know, especially like you said, he had all the goal line touches and he did what he was supposed to do with them. But in week two, it was the Raheem Mostert show, and that was really the first time they looked good running the ball so far. But week week three comes along, and it's Chase Edmonds' turn. Uh, I felt good about Chase Edmonds coming into the season. I got a little cold on him early, but now he's starting to rev up again, so I feel good about him where I usually would play him in a flex spot. But you may be dealing with a situation where it may be an Edmonds week and it may be a Raheem Mostert week. But the good thing is, it's an explosive offense, so that's always good. 
Yeah, uh, Andrew Hawkins was talking about Mike McDaniel and his philosophy uh, last week and saying, you know, he kind of takes a look at what you're not supposed to do and kind of the conventional wisdom and then goes against that. And there's probably no bigger conventional wisdom than uh, don't give Chase Edmonds goal line carries, and he's actually doing it. So, I mean, with goal line carries, he's got a receiving back profile as well. It's it's actually pretty interesting as part of this explosive offense. Yeah, McDaniel coming from that 49ers tree all the way down the, the Gary Kubiak line of mm -hmm. the coaching tree. So you know their running back situation uh, is going to be confusing at best at times. So with that being said, Raheem Moster on the field, he split third down snaps with Chase Edmonds. They each had three. Is there any value still left in Raheem Mostert? Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, it's just it, we was going to be asking that question about Chase Evans exactly. soon. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like they just kind of go with the hot hand. That's – I mean, you don't love to hear that if you have either one of these guys. You definitely don't love to hear it if you drafted Evans because you drafted him at a much higher price. Yep. If you got most – you're like, eh, I took him in the 13th round anyway. But it could be a lot of back and forth going on here. Yeah, and Mostert's a big play guy, so I do think you can kind of use him as a fill-in – running back to type of type of play if you need to. All right. Staying with the backfield here, the hype train man of the summer, Damian <laughs> Pierce for the Texans, finished as a top 10 back this week, over 18 points. Played majority of the early down and short yardage snaps. Listen, Rex Burkhead is still kind of a thorn in the side right now for that pass catching role, but Pierce is looking like the guy everybody got really excited about over the summer. Yeah, so I, it's funny. I actually wrote about Damian Pierce this past week. Uh, and my optimal flex plays as playing because in this type of game, it was going to be lower scoring. It was going to be run oriented on both sides. Damian Pierce claimed the, the early down role in week two. Even if he wasn't going to get targets, he was going to get all those carries and he did just that. So I would say, you know, play the matchups with Damian Pierce. Look who else you got on your roster and just play the matchups. The Bears was a good matchup. He exploited it. Yeah, a great matchup because the Texans are not going to be in a ton of situations where they're able to just run the ball and get away with that. I would also note he had two fumbles in this game. After the second one, it looked like Rex Burkhead was actually playing over him. Now, maybe that doesn't carry into next week, but I would be looking around and seeing if this game has restored some of the excitement that was around Damian Pierce headed into the season. Maybe you can trade him. Yeah, I think it's good probably a good, good week yeah. to shop. All right, in a bizarro game down in Miami for the Bills offense, Stephon Diggs was dealing with some cramps. There's a lot of odd heat-related injuries in this one. And it was Motor Singletary that stepped up. 20, yeah. Over 24 points in Week 3. 19.4% target share in Week 3. That's the fourth highest mark in his career. When things get rough or things get complicated at the receiver position, Josh Allen will lean on Motor when he needs to. Yeah, 100%. And, and you notice Devin Singletary nor James Cook suffer from them cramps you know why they south florida boys they are about, <laughs> they about that they'll play action. out in a hoodie out there right they yeah. got that action out there so they luckily they had them now devin singletary has been the preferred running back for the bills from week one to till now and it, after this game it's only going to continue to be that way james cook is getting a little more run as he should you saw zach moss get in there and have a long run but uh i, I think like like you say He's the one they're going to depend upon now. He's the one with the experience, and he shows up, and he makes plays consistently. 11 targets here for Singletary. That tied Stefan Diggs for the team high. 19% uh, target Oof. share, fourth highest of his career. I do think that, you know, this is going to be tough to count on for Singletary because they specifically drafted James Cook to be a receiving down back. They tried to sign J.D. McKissick. You know, yeah. they, they have other plans in the works here. I think, you know, later in the season, some of this would go to James Cook. So I would be a little bit careful about buying into this completely. All right, closing out with rookie wide receiver Chris Olave. Last week we talked about him having over 300 air yards, and Jameis said, <laughs> I'm going to keep looking for him down the field. So you could see some of these convert to real yards. They did this week, guys. Olave finishes his wide receiver six. He's seen a 32% plus target share in consecutive weeks. With all the injuries the Saints have dealt with at the skill spots, Jameis is now leaning on the rookie already in the first month of the season. Yeah, th this is interesting. And, Pat, back in the summer when we did our uh, previews, I actually said Chris Olave could potentially lead this team in touchdowns just because of the deep, mm -hmm. just because of the yep. deep ball. I'm not a big uh, air yards guy. Yep. I like to see those air yards converted. <laughs> I like the real yards. And he got that. Now, 
the injuries to, to Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry, they say those are not serious. So we got to keep a lookout on that. So, you know, we can't expect this every single game. He's going to get them air yards, though. If you like that, he'll get them. Uh, Jarvis Landry had a great week one. Uh, so I feel like th- those will, those guys will kind of switch off here and there. But Chris Olave, him performing, is definitely what the Saints need right now. Yeah, I think, you know, the air yards, they are important, especially if you're drawing targets consistently. You know, and he had 13 targets in this game. To be able to consistently draw downfield targets, it's going to lead to a lot of upside week to week. You know, if both these guys are kind of banged up, I think, it, you know, this this looks – fairly real to me. This is a potential breakout here from Chris Olave. One last note on Olave, less than 20 wide receivers this year have at least a 26% target share. He's one of them. That's impressive for a rookie, uh, even for a first receivers is balling right now. They are having uh, all of them across the board are off to a really hot start. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll go through the most noteworthy storylines out of Sunday with Roto Pat, who will be joining us in just a minute. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and RotoWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from RotoWorld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.